opening bell of the NFL Stock Exchange podcast. I'm Trevor Sigma. That is Connor Rogers. That beautiful looking man past that beautiful looking new camera is Connor Rogers. That's the way that I should have started that podcast. Connor, you're looking absolutely dapper with the new camera. You're really, you stepping it up, man. Now, now I feel like I got to get a better camera because your camera is now better than mine. No, your camera's great, dude. That, listen, only the best on the NFL Stock Exchange. That has been me and Trevor's motto since we started the show, before we started this show. Only the best. So we're slowly making <laughs> tweaks, upgrades. Couple of weeks for the draft. Can't wait to get it going, man. There are good vibes all around right now. It is a beautiful Mock Draft Monday here for you guys listening. Now, I realized that I said at the end of the Thursday guest Mock Draft episode that today we would be doing a live mock versus the tailgate boys. That is coming just seven days from now we had to push it back a week we're still working with a lot of stuff trying to make sure that make that happen honestly we're putting a lot of resources into the hutch podcast that is coming out this wednesday which i want you guys to go subscribe to and listen to when it comes out but we are putting basically all hands on deck to make sure that's exactly what it needs to be to be the incredible project that is going to be launching on wednesday so that's why we're not doing the dual mock draft this week but we still have a mock draft here for you connor and i are still going to make this thing a lot of fun i'm going to be picking for the evens connor's going to be picking for the odds and we're not doing any trades in this mock draft and the reason why is because we've done a lot of mocks already where we've tried to throw in trades obviously to we've over traded the first round we have, and I, I think that we're to the point where okay it's draft month there's three weeks until the 2022 nfl draft If each team is picking at their spot, what are some realistic options? So we want to give you guys that full scope of who we think is going to be on the board, who teams might go with. So we're not doing trades in this mock draft. Man, I think we had to show it like this because how many times can you read, and I'm guilty of this, you know, the Saints obviously, you know, moving up with those picks, or I'm guilty of this too, the Chiefs coming up for a wide receiver. I think at some point you do need to show, and there's going to be trades. There's going to be teams that get up. That's how the draft works. But I think at some point you need to show the situation for every team of what if you can't what if you make the calls and there is no way up or you don't want to pay the tax that some teams are trying to charge you uh there might be spots where you had to try to work with a division rival and that just doesn't work out in the nfl so uh, trevor i think this is a good time for us to reset look at how things can go with teams staying in their draft slot and of course this draft unlike the one we do next week against the tailgate obviously where we're making the picks that we would if you and i were in the gm chair working hand in hand yeah this once again will be what we think happens yep. a couple of weeks on that thursday night in late april yep before we get into it gotta tell people about our new presenting sponsor the folks over at jock market it is such a cool combination of daily fantasy and then regular fantasy sports that you're used to their motto stop betting start trading it's so cool buy and sell shares of players in real time for real money while games are happening all shares have a guaranteed cash payout at the end of every night it's you know for here's here's how i would put it let's say in fantasy football you think aaron Rodgers has a juicy matchup this week and you say to yourself all right before the week for the game i'm gonna buy five shares of aaron Rodgers at five dollars well if aaron Rodgers ends up having that juicy fantasy week and he finishes let's say is the number one fantasy player that week then the number one spot pays out 25 dollars a share so if you can do the math 125 dollars for the 25 dollar investment that you put in boom it's a hundred dollars that's how you win it there's a lot of other fun ways that you can win it too connor just hit his first first big win, win baby hit Let's his go. first big win who was it, it was it was it, it was Pete alonzo right? grand slam Pete alonzo grand great, slam baby. didn't come in first but in that mlb market uh, i believe it came in the top five had him you know obviously well below that two shares hey every little bit helps man it's it is a <laughs> it's so out there in such a good way because it's a little bit more complex than daily fantasy but in a way where you feel a little bit more rewarded it's it's so fun man that first win felt so good brother it might take you a little bit of time to get used to it but i promise you when you do you're gonna have a blast playing pay it playing it deposit now use the promo code pff And they will match up to 100% of up to $100 of whatever your first deposit is. Plus, you get a free PFF Edge subscription over at Jock Market. That's jockmkt.com backslash PFF. You got the MLB starting up. Obviously, the NHL, the NBA, they're all full swing as well. That's Jock Market, jockmkt.com backslash PFF. Let's get right to it. Let's get right into the mock draft here. Connor, you are picking for the odds, which means you have the floor with the Jacksonville Jaguars. (sighs) Trevor, you know, I really wanted to do, you know, kind of what I do and shake things up a little bit here. 
and do our, okay, what if Trayvon Walker really goes first, then how does the rest <laughs> of the draft fall? I'm not doing it. I'm still not there. Maybe we get there in two weeks, because obviously next week's mock draft will be what Trevor and I would do as GMs. I still think it's Aiden Hutchinson. I still think he's going to be the number one overall pick. It's Hutch week here at PFF. He it is, has, it to, is he has to go first overall. And when all is said and done, there's a reason why he's the big time favorite to go first overall for Jacksonville, because we don't talk about it enough. We almost gloss over it. This gives them a guy that comes in and changes the identity of the team, gives Josh Allen help on that front four where you're going, okay, you can't just double team this guy all the time. For Aiden Hutchinson, you get a pass rusher to pair with Josh Allen that can really help this defense to start to impact some of the opposing quarterbacks that they face because they have not been good enough at that. So that is why Aiden Hutchinson will be the number one overall pick in the NFL draft. A lot of options that the Detroit Lions can go with here at number two. I'm sure they would absolutely love Hutchinson, but Hutchinson not available. I think when it's all said and done, he's not going to be available. Do they like Malik Willis, Connor? That is the big question because I think they would take Man. a guy like Trayvon Walker over Kyle Hamilton. Over but KT? Malik, but, ooh, K, I mean, KT, KT is definitely in there as well. I actually talked to a in the no Lions person who said that it could it could it could very well be Kayvon Thibodeau. He thinks they like Kayvon Thibodeau a lot. I think they'd take Trayvon Walker over Kyle Hamilton, but for this mock draft, I'll say yeah. what I think is gonna happen and I'll say what should happen. I'll have them taking Kayvon Thibodeau at number two. I think that that makes a lot of sense for them. And honestly, man, I think it makes the most sense. I get the Trayvon Walker appeal. I know that his ceiling is super high, but there is so much, there is such a big gap between what you think he would be as the worthwhile number two overall pick and what he showed you on the field at Georgia. He's got, he's got a lot of ways to go. There's a lot of things that are in the way for between him realizing that potential. Kayvon Thibodeau, it's not necessarily the case. He had an elite pass rushing grade this past year. So I, the guy's been fantastic all three years of his career when he has been healthy. I'm going to go Kayvon Thibodeau here at number two for the Lions. And I'm going to trust the, the uh, in the know person that I spoke to last week. Yeah, th I mean, it makes sense, right? We know how in they were on HUD. We know how much they need pass rush help. There's no secret there. Uh, they, and they need help in a lot of areas, but that's got to be the number one area that they're looking to target because the quarterback class does not really have a guy that, uh, you know, anybody views as a top two overall pick in this draft. Maybe they surprise us in that route and go Malik Willis. I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, so Kayvon Thibodeau at number two, I think it started to get exaggerated. Trevor, his fall, his potential, you know, out of the top 10, out of the top right. eight, all those things. Yeah. I think Kayvon Thibodeau is a lock for the top five. So number three, the Houston Texans, obviously one of the more difficult teams to figure out in this entire draft. With Hutchinson and Thibodeau off the board, I narrow this down to two players, and it's one on each side of the ball. It is, and we've gone over this, Ike Aquanu on offense would not mm -hmm. surprise anybody. Build that tough offensive line. It doesn't matter that Laramie Tunzel's back. They still need more help on that offensive line. This is a team that could not run the football last year. Then I look on the defensive uh, side of the ball, the defensive line. And I look at Trayvon Walker, and I've had this conversation with you, I think, off the air before. I don't know if we've had it on the air. I look at Trayvon Walker, and I just wonder with Nick Casario, does he see a, you know, Richard Seymour kind of player that right. he was around for in New right. England, where it's, this guy's going to control the line of scrimmage. He's going to slowly figure it out as a rusher, but right now he's the dominant defender with length, size, athleticism. We think we could play him at five tech, three tech, all over the place. And I'm truly torn. And I think we've done the icky at three things so many times that I am a scenarios guy. I like to see how things play out. So sure. this mock, I go with Trayvon Walker at three. Okay, It's absolutely in play. If he does not go two with the Lions, I think the picks for the Texans will truly be between Trayvon Walker and Nikki Aquanu, but I think right now they need more help on the defensive line, and that's how they'll look at things here. I love this. I love how this is. I love how this is shaping up because I feel like people just naturally, when they're doing mock drafts, they kind of like go every other to keep things really even and keep the talent moving down the line, so they make the mock draft picks yeah. a little bit easier afterwards. But every pick is every man for themselves, essentially. They're going to want the best player. And right now, we have three edge rushers off the board in the first three picks. And this could happen. We just made the case for why in each situation, this is logical for each team. So I get it. Iki Kwanu is awesome. Evan Neal is awesome. Charles Cross, same thing. Like, quarterbacks could go at this point. But Sauce Garner, all, all of these guys, I think, are in the mix. 
But what if it comes out this way? What if three edge rushers go at the top of the draft? So I like how this is shaping up. This is this is going to be a fun rest of the mock draft. And here we are at number four. Oh, a, lot is, a lot is on my shoulders here because Jets, luck, brother. Fans, Jets fans probably really wanted Kayvon Thibodeau, right? And he is not here at number four. There's also a lot of Jet fans that say, okay, even if Iggy Aquano on the board, we don't want that. We got Mekhi Becton. Mekhi Becton They're is our guy. <laughs> What we think should happen or what we think is going to happen. Connor, am I crazy for, for wanting for wanting Sauce Garner here? I feel like Sauce Garner is where I'm leaning with this pick. I think a little bit only because when they went out and paid DJ Reed, and it's not that they don't need corner help, but Sauce Garner would be a great player. It was kind of their message to the staff. Okay, you have enough now to get by. You have Eccles and Bryce Hall, who were their starters last year, battling for one spot. Reed on the other side, where I'm not saying they're not going to draft a corner. I just look at Robert Sala's longtime history as an assistant coach in this league and then having an influence with what the 49ers did and now having influence with what the Jets do. Mm -hmm. And I just think they are not the team because the way the defense is built with that front four needing to get home and athletic linebackers behind them that they're the team that will not use a top five pick on a corner. I, I think it's the scheme, Trevor, over the talent in this situation where they look at what sauce does best and sauce is great and they would not the how much better would sauce Gardner make the new york jets compared to some other players on the board i think is the internal question they'll have to answer and knowing the team the way they do i, I don't think they would take him at four and rob robert sala did say was it was it the combine or were the, with the owners meetings where he said him and joe douglas were gonna we're gonna fight over D line O line. What D line O line? That's the thing. Like it wasn't. It wasn't necessarily just yeah. offensive defense. It was D line O line. D yeah. line was off the board. Don't think he was lying at all. Right. Which and is I, crazy. I, I believe that as you were kind of talking about Sauce there, and as I was reminded of that quote, let's go Iki Aquano here. Let's go back to the well, the old, old yeah, reliable man. in mock drafts, if you will. I think the offensive lineman that they're going to have highest on their board, and we'll go. Uh, we'll go Iki Aquano, a run blocking mauler for the New York Jets at number four. Yeah, I, I, we mean you've been on that one for a long time. If he makes it there, it's hard to see Joe Douglas not turning that card in and then figuring out the rest. So we'll see what happens if he makes it past that third overall pick with the Texans. Five, the New York Giants. This is very easy. It will be Evan Neal at five in this scenario. I think it will be Evan Neal on draft like night it. at number I five. I like it. Yeah, I don't like it a lot. I think when you look at it, <laughs> And they like Andrew Thomas on the left side. They like what they've seen from Evan Neal on the right side in 2020. The measurables, everything's there. The athleticism. I really think this will be the pick on draft night at five. Have I explained on this podcast why I think the Carolina Panthers are going quarterback at number six? I can't Please remember do. if I have. I don't think you have. Look, We've done it, but not... I haven't heard not, this. From not on the yet. podcast. You usually okay. don't pick... You don't pick evens usually. Right. Okay. So that then you're probably right. So I haven't really explained this yet. Scott Fritter did a little Q&A with the Panthers writers over at Panthers.com, and they asked him a lot of different draft questions. And, you know, one of the draft questions was kind of like, what needs do you have on the team? And he talked about offensive line. And he, and he said, like, offensive line's got to get better. Offensive line is where this draft is probably going to be richest at our pick at number six. But he's like, obviously, we have, you know, a, a, a potential quarterback need as well. We're trying to figure out the quarterback position. And then, and then he also, at the end of that sentence, he threw in a couple other positions. But then he was like, you know, Brian Burns, you know, he's coming to the end of his contract. And so like, you know, you know, who knows, maybe we'll draft an edge rusher. You know, you got to think about contract at that point. And then I, I think he tried to, he tried to catch himself and say like, well, you know, we want to extend Brian Burns to me, Connor, that was a panic. There's no way he's even throwing Brian Burns name into that answer. If he's not trying to make people think that he's not taking a quarterback. That's what that's what I think. Oh, maybe maybe I'm reading absolutely. way too deep. No, 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 it, you're right. But I for, for for him to even mention Brian Burns means that he was trying to throw everything he could out there at this answer to try to make people think that he's not picking a quarterback. Yeah. And I'm I'm weeding through it. I think the fact that he even said Brian Burns' name makes me believe they are honing in on quarterback and they don't want anybody else to know they're honing in on quarterback because they don't want somebody to jump them. They don't want somebody to tr potentially trade up, whether it's the Steelers or the Saints or whoever we've talked about, maybe going up from Malik Willis or Kenny Pickett or whatever. 
they don't want people thinking they're going to pick a quarterback so they don't have to trade above them. So obviously then there are more to pick on the board here at number six. That's what I think. That's what I think. Well, theory. one, I, I love the explanation because I think you're right. Two, it's also truly hilarious. Scott Fitterer lying during this Q&A. The guy that had Kenny Pickett hold a football in his <laughs> hands in front of him. It's like a kid stealing a cookie from the cookie jar and telling his mom no with crumbs dripping down his face. Like, <laughs> it just, it, it's so ridiculous. GMs are such bad liars. So That's what I think, man. So what I After think. all that, did you go with Malik Willis or Kenny? I'm, I'm, no, I'm I'm going to pick Malik Willis. I think Malik okay. Willis is still going to be QB one off this board. If the Panthers have a chance to take one of them, I think they're going to take Willis. And so that's that is honestly, man. I I think with that answer, the second I read that answer, I went, they're picking quarterback, hundred percent. There's no way that he names those players or specifically Brian Burns if he wasn't trying to get people hot off of his trail. So. Like I'm with you. I, I've been convinced they are taking one at six for about two weeks now. And and by like, I'm not even maybe they surprise and take a tackle. But especially the way this board fell, I am about 95 percent sure the Panthers are taking a quarterback. We'll see. And, I, and I've talked to people that are plugged in, in in various areas of this quarterback class. And and they're a little bit more unsure than me where they're like, oh, no, they're they're not showing their hand at all yet. But there's definitely a lot of interest in it. Mm. I think ultimately that I don't know. Pick. I don't know. I think I think, I think, I think we got a sneak peek at the hand. Yeah, literally. Kenny literally the Kenny football. Pickett. All right. So the Giants, number seven, no trades in this mock. So the Giants are going to make both picks here, five and seven. They got Evan Neal slam dunk pick for them early on. Uh, now it gets a little bit more interesting, right? This is a team that definitely needs corners in wink martindale scheme they need mm -hmm. another pass rusher they could use a lot of different things than new york giants but when all is said and done i think if they stayed in this slot it'll be sauce gardner trevor you and i have talked about this a lot in depth we've reached this point um we've obviously had schmelk on this podcast who you know it, you know we've talked with him about what the giants could do pat leonard what they could do um it's just a man press scheme that is so reliant on those corners on the island very much or how much pressure they bring if they can't keep James Bradbury, even if they can, Adoree Jackson's not going to be there long term. They need to get younger at the position, and a great one is staring them in the face. He's a perfect scheme fit, great fit for New York. Sauce Gardner, the pick at seven. Falcons are at eight. Falcons it's could a, quite, it's a little tricky here. It's right. I mean, they could quite literally go anywhere. You know, the, the, this this is one of those selections that actually gets easier if it were a different type of mock draft where I was just picking who I wanted for the Falcons predicting what they're going to select is very difficult because they have so many holes on their roster. Ultimately, Kyle Hamilton is here at number eight. And with all of the big time edge rushers off the board, I don't think they're going to go offensive line. And so I think they're just going to look to either wide receiver. If they think one is worth it, which I'm not so sure one is at number eight or a guy like Derek Stanley Kyle Hamilton, I think it's probably going to be between those guys for what this board is left, which we've got Kyle Hamilton, we've got Derek Singley, Charles Cross, George Karloftis. You got all the wide receivers here, Devin Lloyd, Devontae Wyatt, Jordan Davis. But even of all of those guys, I think that Hamilton's the pick for him. I think that they're going to hmm. believe that they got a very special, unique player on offense last year with Kyle Pitts. I think they could really convince themselves they're getting that same similar kind of player on the back end with Kyle Hamilton. So I'm going to go Kyle Hamilton here at eight. Man, it's, you know, they, you're nailed it. They're in such a fascinating spot because they need a little bit of everything. Kyle Hamilton, one of the best players on the board there. And they've kind of shown you, I think, that they're going to take the high floor players that can reset the franchise a little bit. So we've been all over the place where Kyle Hamilton can go. It feels like eight to 11 is the new range. For him and your situation, it makes a ton of sense. So now the Seahawks are on the clock. This is an interesting one. I still don't know what this team is doing. Are they trying to win football games? Are they trying to rebuild? They have, you know, the DK <laughs> you, you Metcalf just, situation. You just, you're just saying that was funny. I don't know what this team's doing. Are they trying to win football games? It's just that was a... <laughs> I, I lean with that one. The way the roster is constructed. They have money tied into safeties. The defensive line definitely needs help. The offensive line definitely needs help. And, yeah. and that's where I think this battle comes down to. I think it could be Jermaine Johnson in this situation. I think it could be Charles Cross in this situation. Now, we've gone back and forth that we... It sounds like Cross could slide, even though we're pretty high on him as a player. Yeah. I think, you know, uh, yeah. Seattle does not have Dwayne Brown back yet. Last time I checked, I mean, news updates every half hour, it feels like in the NFL. So. But last time I checked, they do not have Dwayne Brown back yet. 
This is tricky. I mean, Trevor, do you feel like this is a lock for Jermaine Johnson in this spot, or do you think it's more difficult than that? I mean, I think it's a little bit more difficult than that. I think Me that too. when we had when we had Mina Kimes on Stingley for the guest mock draft, on the board. She, she took Stingley. Stingley is still there. He performed very well at his pro day, checked all the boxes, if you will. I mean, the narrative out there is very strange about Stingley that he like doesn't like football and stuff. And so I mean that's I don't know. I, I don't I don't know where we're getting that. We're 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 at justification season at this point where people yeah, are just sure. like grasping at straws to validate maybe having Sauce Garner ahead of Stingley or maybe even having Trent McDuffie above Stingley or something like that. Go watch the tape with Derek Stingley. I mean, with full context, he's he's simply one of the best players in this draft. So I think that he'd be in consideration here at number nine. It, you're right. It doesn't seem like Charles Cross is going as high as we believe that he's. I don't going think he's to. going in nine. I don't think they're going to take like Kenny Pickett here for a quarterback. No, I, no. I don't think that they would want to do that over even just having Drew Locke. I think I'm going to go Stingley. Looking at their corner okay. situation. All right. Now, okay. I mean, I'm a huge tough. fan of it. He's my CB one, so I'm totally. Great. They need a corner. I don't think they're taking Cross or Pickett, so I'm ruling out quarterback and tackle with needs. Yes, they have needs at edge. But they pick at 40 and 41. So is their thought process here, we can only get a corner like Stingley in this spot. But at edge, maybe we can get a Neba Katie at 40 or 41. Mm. Or a player like that that fits what they want to do. So mm. I, I, I will go Stingley here. I think his stock is all over the place. But I think Seattle's a team that has shown you in the draft before they are not afraid to swing for the fences on athleticism and for players that have some question marks. All right, I know who I'm picking here for the New York Jets. Made it a as, little easy for you. As but don't we think are up to number this 10. This is crazy. I, 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 who do you think I'm taking? I think you're taking Jermaine Johnson, but it wouldn't shock me if you took a Drake London in this spot either. I'm taking James and Williams. Whoa, for, all right. For the New York Jets at number 10. We know how much they coveted the speed of Tyree Kill, how much they wanted to make it happen. And of course, drafting James and Williams isn't something as simple as, oh, we missed out on Tyree Kill, we got James and Williams. Yeah. But the speed profile is totally there with them. And I really do think that they want that. They covet that. That is what they want on the team. So I'm gonna I'm I'm actually going to have them at number 10 getting a speed profile that they maybe believe they can't yep. get later in the draft because if they no. look, look if if they want to drake london you can maybe convince yourself that you could get a george pickens in the early second round yeah. right and, and, and that's kind There's of the a couple same, players that's kind yeah. of the same profile right if you want a garrett wilson or a chris olave sky Moore, right Jahan dotson those guys might be available at the back end of the second round I don't think you're getting a speed profile type player like Jameis Williams. And on the flip side, to bring it to the to the Jermaine Johnson pick, which would also obviously be a slam dunk pick for them. I love Jermaine Johnson. There might be some damn good edge rushers at the top of the second round, Connor. Or there might be some damn good edge rushers that you can trade back up from the second round into the first round, which they have the ammunition to do. But there might only be one player of Jameis and Williams caliber and style and ability in this draft. So I'm going to have him going at number 10. Did you see... By the way, I love Jamison Williams, and they, they need a deep threat for Zach Wilson, who loves to throw the ball down the field. So if anyone thinks you're crazy for that pick, um, I, I don't think it's out of bounds entirely. Now, did you see Jermaine Johnson's tweet that said, I don't need to talk, my tape does that, and will continue to. Whoever drafts me, let's ball. Now, whatever, right? Great. Cool tweet. I don't Great. care. His location was on, and it said Florham Park, New Jersey. Nobody is in Florham Park, New Jersey, especially in draft prospect, unless they are visiting the New York Jets. So I found it really funny mm. and nobody had been on it that he was visiting the New York Jets. So I found that really interesting. Um, oh, man, look, at, look, look at you. Look at investigative social media journalist. Connor Jets Rock. Twitter would never let that buy me. It's in my <laughs> my ads. There's 30 seconds that it happens. So a real shout out and credit to them. All right. Keeping the board moving. Uh, we have Washington on the clock at 11. Your pick at 10. It made this pretty easy for me. It's going to be Drake London here. I, okay. I think I, the All way right. I like the way he is a compliment to Terry McLaurin. You have made the trade for Carson Wentz. There has to be a part of you that goes, you know, I want to I want to prove the Internet wrong and be right. Carson Wentz can get back to what he once was, can be a good player for us. And we are going to surround him with the necessary talent uh, to get him back to that form. So Washington getting a above the rim wide receiver to pair with Scary Terry. And I, I think that would do wonders for them. OK, Minnesota Vikings up at number 12. I am convincing myself that 
because I, I we had Arif Hassan on for the guest mock draft, and he as it, like if he were the GM, he selected Tyler Linderbaum, who he recognized is his position interior offensive line. It's much lower on the positional value chart, but he was getting a guy that is just going to be good for them. That they're going to be able to plug in that they like. I don't think that happens on draft night, but that the guest mock draft wasn't a predictive mock, so I'm not holding this against Arif or anything. I'm convincing myself that. Kwesi Adapo Mensa, the general manager, and Kevin O'Connell, they're going to make a high positional value pick here at number 12. I think it's either going to be a corner if Sauce or Stingley gets them at number 12, or I think it might be an edge rusher. I really do. I know they signed Zedarius Smith. I know they signed, uh, or they, they still have Daniel Hunter, but I think it's going to be one of those like high value positions. That's no so I I just I, I don't know why it's just kind of in my gut. I don't think they're gonna go elsewhere with it. And when I look at edge rusher, George Karloftis is still there, Jermaine Johnson is still there. Oh yeah. I, I think it would be one of those guys. Maybe even they pick a Jordan Davis now that I'm saying it out loud. I think that I think you're onto something there. Galvin Tomlinson, Armand Watts, Harrison Phillips, that's her D line right there. Maybe I'm going against myself a little D- bit and I'm dirty talking Harry, myself out of it. Harrison but. Phillips great nickname oh, dirty that dirty is, that is really oh great nickname. shirt trevor i did not see that so you lean back for the first time on the show the devil, a race, devil shirt. race shirt look at Dude, that you, people look you at gotta that. loosen up you gotta loosen up the shot if you're gonna <laughs> bring that kind of t-shirt game <laughs> jesus <laughs> shout out homage for the shirt okay i just said I'm that wearing it, a homage shirt too that's weird we are that's why we're podcast co-hosts listen we yeah, we, call, we, we call each other fashion wise yes. before the yeah. show we make sure that we're you know we're, we're really in sync here i just told myself that it was going to be a premium position and now i'm going to pick a nose tackle but he's a unicorn nose tackle so i'm going to go with jordan <laughs> davis if anybody hates it i don't know what to tell you i'm going to contradict myself a lot on this podcast so uh yeah jordan davis i out convinced myself of it jordan davis number 12 skull nation might come for your blood after that one but i don't know Dude, I don't... jordan davis Darius smith daniel hunter that's stupid come on yeah it's fine come on and you still got patrick peterson all right big shout out eric kendrick still there obs whatever man big fan of it big fan that's of it good looking defense all right 13 they need a corner but you know we'll figure they, it out later. badly but we'll, fig- we'll figure right, we'll figure, figure that out, out later Figure that out later. All right, 13, the Houston Texans, the classic every position in the PFF mock draft simulator. Their words, not mine. Um, So number three, they got Trayvon Walker. Now it's kind of wide open here. There was rumors Brandon Cooks could be traded for about 30 seconds, then he signed a two-year extension. We had on John McClain, uh, who was pretty adamant about this team not taking a wide receiver in the first round. So keeping that in mind, I will not be going that direction either. It is interesting, though here for the Texans because you still have Charles Cross on the board and keep in mind they already went defensive line so I'd like to look offensive line here Tyler Linderbaum is on the board in this situation Trevor Penning who I am convinced is going much earlier than anybody is ready for at this point Mm -hmm. this is a tricky one here, Trevor, I'm going to go because of positional value. I'm going to go with uh, Charles Cross. I I look at them and still think they need a long-term right tackle. Okay. And I think Cross has been preparing, knowing in the draft teams telling him that's where they might see his long-term home, especially short-term home. So I'm not going to pass on the value in this spot. And I don't think the Texans are a team that should either in this draft. So at 13, really wish a Kyle Hamilton was here. Uh, Really wish even, you know, a Derek Stingley kind of player was here. But in this spot, it'll be Charles Cross. And you have a lot of teams coming up soon that would have loved to have him in the middle of this round. Man, the Houston Texans coming away with Trayvon Walker and Charles Cross. It's great. It's great. It's how you rebuild the ground floor. That's what you do. SEC, baby. Uh, The the Baltimore Ravens at number 14. We had Jeff Zarebic on for our guest mock draft series, and he made a very compelling case that if Jermaine Johnson is on the board, this is absolutely the pick for him guess what? Jermaine Johnson is on the board. And I think this is going to be the pick for him. Uh, Jeff did a great job outlining exactly what type of edge rusher they're going to need. They like out of AOA on one side, but bringing back Michael Pierce. Now they brought back Calais Campbell on a two year deal as well. Certainly. I think that they need cornerback help, but a lot of what Jeff was saying is that the Ravens were just straight up unlucky last year, you know, with a lot of their injuries. And I think that that goes into it and people forget a lot of that. And, they they need to add newer bodies. I don't think there's any doubt about that, but they're certainly hoping that their secondary much more healthy this year 
can hold up a lot better. And what they really need is a Jermaine Johnson type of player if he's available. Guess what? He is here in this mock draft. So I'm going to go Jermaine Johnson at 14. Yeah, it's a home run for them. If Jermaine Johnson can make it to 14, it's very up in the air if he does. I'm convinced he'll be a top 10 pick in this draft. But in that situation, in Jeff's situation, that's the guy you take if you're Baltimore. All right, 15, the Philadelphia Eagles, one of two picks now in the first round. Eh, the need is always right there, linebacker. But, you know, we had Ben on. We we know this from the Eagles history. It just doesn't seem like a direction they're willing to go at this point in the draft where mm. I would love to take Devin Lloyd in right. this situation. And maybe right. when it's up to us in that capacity, we will. We'll see. Or even N'Kobe Dean. But in this situation, I think they're going to look to restock maybe the interior of their defensive line. Look for a number two to pair with Devontae Smith long term. And that's why I'm going to take Garrett Wilson in this spot. Nice, I think nice. when you look, you're right, just get a playmaker, a yeah. uh, guy that knows how to get open. Now you have a Devontae Smith and Garrett Wilson, two guys that are clean separators. Somebody's going to be getting the one on ones. That person's going to be open a lot. And you still have another pick in this draft if you do want to allocate some resources to the trenches. Yep. No, I, I love it. This is fantastic. I think that when you look at Garrett Wilson's skill set, he does such a great job of having that short area explosiveness that he's a, he's an instant separator, if you will. And I think that Jalen Hurts, Ben said it Ben said it best on the guest mock draft. Jalen Hurts has gotten better every single year he's played football. Like going all the way back to his time in Alabama, he got better throughout his time in Alabama. He got better at Oklahoma. He has gotten better as quarterback of the Philadelphia Eagles. He is he gets better every single year. So if you continue to put good weapons around this guy and a good offensive line in front of him, he has not shown you anything that would say that he will not continue to get better. You give him a, a wide receiver like Garrett Wilson in there, I absolutely love that combination. We got the Saints at number 16. We had Nick Underhill on the guest mock draft, and he picked Trevor Penning. Again, I'm going to piggyback off him. I think that that's the direction they're going to go. We mentioned it when we did the mock draft last Monday, the live mock draft, that – I had the Saints packaging 16 and 19 to move up to number five with the New York Giants, and I had them selecting a quarterback, Malik Willis. But during that mock draft, I said, we've heard that they are also maybe targeting a trade up high for an offensive lineman, for an Evan Neal, for Aki Aquanu, for maybe a Charles Cross to replace Teron Armstead. So with no trades in this mock, Kenny Pickett is still on the board, but Malik Willis is not. I'm going to go Trevor Penning. I think that it's mm. uh, a very strong possibility that they're going to pick offensive tackle first and foremost here in this draft. I think so, too. I mean, they got to replace, obviously, Teron Armstead. Right. Maybe they come up and try to find that replacement. Maybe they stay home. And if they do stay home, I think you hit this one on, on the head, Trevor. I think it would be, ironically, Trevor Penning, who... You know, I filed my write-up on him uh, today, and I've, I've felt this way about him for a long time. He's such a fascinating player because to me, it, I have him in the second round, and he is still a developmental player. Great measurables. I think so too. But man, when you're talking about a guy that you know will be coming into rookie minicamp at 23, and you call him a developmental player, and so many of those developmental flaws uh, are in pass protection, it, it's a little scary to me. But I agree. I agree with you in the spot. I think he's going in the top 20, and yeah. I think he's going to a team that needs to plug him in immediately and i think it's going to be there's going to be a lot of penalties and i think there's going to be some protection issues so 23 is not the worst no it's you not know, like 23 23 is okay i could deal. i could deal i could deal you know with what it is it's a 20 i can too i'm not like the age police like twitter has become yeah I'm out it's here insane I'm out here calling 23 year olds old not 31 you know like I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm 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 washed beyond washed it's more of the fact that there was plenty of struggles against FCS competition. Yeah, of course. And now you're, you know, Michael Felder from Stadium, who I do a, a show with every Thursday, said it best. You are really going up two levels of football. And a lot of people forget that. You're not mm -hmm. going from, you know, Power 5 to the NFL. You're going from the FCS level to the NFL. And it's, that's it's a big people, adjustment. That's why people need to calm down about Christian Watson. You oh need, boy! You need Please to tell him. You need tell to him. Go, you need to calm down a little bit. He's fun. Don't make him anything he's not. I don't know why I'm whispering because it's a podcast and the point because is everyone to ruins. Listen. Everyone ruins all the fun well, second so, round players. So, so obviously, like I, I wrote an article, uh, and I could talk about Christian Watson because I assume we're probably not going to pick Christian Watson here in this first round, but. I wrote an article when Christian Watson uh, had his insane combine performance athletically. And I was like, I think he's pretty much, I, I said, I think he's a lock for the top 50, but I got some pushback from people who were like, what do you mean top 50? Like he's a lock for the first round. And I'm like, mm, 
I'd, I'd be easy on that. Top of the second round, you can understand because this dude is a rare athlete. I mean, for him to be six foot four, 210 pounds, for him to have the explosive numbers, the agility numbers, the 40 yard dash that he did, you take a chance on that guy. Absolutely 100%. But for him to be a first round pick, kind of a guy where you come in and you play right away and you're able to start, like you mentioned, when you go FCSC NFL, that's like taking two jumps up. And I think his ball skills needed work at the FCS level. Talk about when he's got NFL corners on his hip every single every single week. So I just a little bit of a mini Christian Watson rant. Still like him a lot, but we do I think need to calm down a little bit on him. No, it was a good one, and it was much needed. And like you said, if we don't get to talk about him today, you know, it was a good time to do it. So the Chargers are on the clock, and, mm-hmm. and I run into a huge problem with this selection. Right as it stands right now, the Chargers pick at seventeen, and then they don't pick till seventy nine. As it stands today, Lovers, yeah. and they. They have a million picks outside the top 100, but you know where those can get you, only so far. So, as it stands today, this team needs an offensive lineman really badly, a tackle really badly from a, yeah. across from Rashawn Slater. Yeah. They also need a corner, and Trent McDuffie's right there. And in my eyes, I, I would take Trent McDuffie right here. But I think, Trevor, they know how desperate they are at tackle that this pick is going to be Bernard Raymond. And... Mm. It, it, it doesn't oh, get it doesn't get pretty after Bernard Raymond, like he's basically the last Tyler one. Tyler Smith, that you would, yeah, but I, dude, I love Tyler Smith, but he's the same. It's kind of the same conversation that you have with Trevor Penning. Like, yes, he really is, did not play young. that good of competition at Tulsa. I think he played Oklahoma once and Ohio State once, and those were two of his. It, I mean, it was tough games for him. He should, he is he has so much to learn to be a fully starting caliber offensive tackle. And you're right, he's young. He definitely can learn that. But for the Chargers, you know like I don't think the Chargers can consider Tyler Smith because if you if you're drafting Tyler Smith right away to the, the Chargers need somebody to step in at right tackle. And if you're playing yeah. Tyler Smith there in week one, I think it's going to be, it might be tough for, for Justin Herbert. So I don't and, know. And I don't think it would be easy for Bernard Raymond, but I think this would be the selection here. Now we want to talk about the age police. He will turn 25 in mm. September of his rookie season, but context old you, man, old that year after 401k, his exchange year, 401k is almost maxed out. Okay. It's guys. This getting, isn't guys that's getting an old social age. guys getting social security. All right. It's an old rookie age. Just now, kidding. he is, you know, had to do the mandatory six-month military service in Austria after he graduated high school. Uh, so he was basically away from football for a year, then came back, went to Central Michigan as a tight end for two years, then made the move to tackle, gained all that weight. He's done a lot better than pretty much anybody would considering that situation. So, man, this is a good exercise to show people... I mean, me and Trevor aren't taking Penning and Raymond in the top 20, but you can easily see a situation where the NFL does, and I think it's time to brace for it. Okay. All right. Uh, dude, I, I like Bernard Raymond. I think he's got a ton of potential. I think, again, his best ball is I like is him a lot better than Penning. Uh, so do I. So do I. So do I. I have I have Bernard uh, Raymond uh, ahead of Trevor Penning in my ranking. So we got the Philadelphia Eagles in number 18. I think we got to pick up the pace probably here on the second half of this. Oh my God, we're this just... mock here. I know we do, we get so carried away <laughs> with this. It's gonna be time to start the next day. We started this Sunday <laughs> night, and for all of you listening, we're, we're gonna get up and go to work soon. Okay, uh, they pick Garrett Wilson at 15. Devin Lloyd's right there. I'd love to pick Devin Lloyd. It's just not gonna happen. Uh, Trent McDuffie, I think is is their type. Um, Ooh, Devontae Wyatt, though. That's the one, right? I think I think that's got to be the pick, right? Because Solak was on here, and he was talking about how Javon Hargrave and Fletcher Cox getting up there a little bit in age, and I think neither of them are under contract after 2023. Is that what he said? I don't want to be spreading lies. Maybe you can fact check me on there, Connor. But I love Devontae Wyatt for them anyways. I think it's a really solid selection because – they almost didn't have Fletcher Cox coming back. They had to redo the contract just to get him to come back. And you, know, you, you ask people and they'll say, yeah, it's not like Fletcher Cox is trash, but he's not what he was. You get a pretty easy transition if you bring a guy like Devontae Wyatt in there, play next to two really great guys on the interior, let him be a rotation player, uh, let him come in and learn his first year in the NFL, contribute a little bit, but then really hit the ground running year two, year three, year four, that rookie contract. I, I think Devontae Wyatt would be a very good pick for them here at 18. All right, 19, the Saints back on the clock. Them and the Eagles just going back and forth here. All right, so they were not able to get Garrett Wilson because he went 15 to the Eagles. So in this situation, they got their tackle. They took Trevor Penning at 16. At 19 here, it's going to be Chris Olave. I think he's the kind of receiver they like that fits. 
uh, smooth mover, smooth operator, can win vertically, can win intermediate routes. You know, not a ton after the catch with Chris Olave, but he's got a lot of juice, uh, and he's somebody that'll come into that offense and get open for Jameis. And really, they'll be able to scheme targets very easily to him in that 8 to 15 yard area earlier on. Take some vertical shots as well, which we know is such a huge need. Cross from Michael Thomas. So Chris Olave, a little bit of run of wide receivers here now. We still have Traylon Burks on the board, but mm-hmm. uh, this wide receiver run definitely took off in the top 20 picks. Uh, Pittsburgh Steelers up at 20. They could go offensive line, but I don't love the way that offensive line kind of fell to them. Uh, Kenny Pickett is still on the board, and I think that he would be the selection if the board fell this way. If they're not moving, if Malik Willis is off the board, they're staying at 20 and Pickett's available for them. I, I think they're taking Kenny Pickett. So I I don't think we need to explain too many more words than that. Pittsburgh Steelers need a quarterback badly. Pickett's still here. You got the Pittsburgh connection with him playing college ball right in Pittsburgh. So I think this I think this ends up happening here if uh, if the board fell this way. All right. So uh, the Steelers get what they hope is their quarterback of the future. New England is on the clock at 21. We've had Kyer Elam go here a lot. We've had mm-hmm. wide receivers go here before. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did see Mike Giardi... Uh, from NFL Network, who obviously knows the team very well, point out today, you know, that they could very well go with a big bodied player here. He brought up Penning and Raymond, who are gone in this mock draft. But when you look at New England, they are an interesting team on the offensive line. They, they could absolutely draft one of the guards early, play him at right guard with that spot being open. Uh, so I, I'm going to look at that situation that he brought up and. I'm going to go with Zion Johnson in this spot. I I think that would be... Now, I know Zion's played on the left side, uh, so you'd have to be comfortable with that transition there. But New England, they are a team that always prioritizes the trenches. They they need a lot quietly, and they really need a number one corner. But I don't know if they'll value a guy like Elam in the top 25 picks in this scenario. Maybe they can come back up on day two instead and get him if he makes it there. So we'll go Zion Johnson with the 21st overall pick. And that hurts a team like Arizona or Dallas at 23 and 24. Yeah, definitely hurts them who would love to get their hands on Zion Johnson, no doubt about it. But before then, we got the Packers at 22. George Karloftis is still on the board, and I really think that George Karloftis would be a great pick for him. And I think this is realistic. You know, for as much as we did some mocks earlier in the draft process where we had Karloftis going in the top 10, top 12. It Those just days are over. Yeah, it just does not feel like that is going to be the case anymore. So I think he's a back half of the first round kind of a player. Getting a unique skill set kind of defensive lineman who could play a little inside out for you run rush from a two point a three point stance i like george carloff this he's got a lecture got a little extra meat on the bone if you will i think the packers are really going to like that in a guy that allows them to stay very versatile on the defensive line so it's not the most dire need because they still have Preston smith they still have rashawn gary but they lose to darius smith they'd love to have that rotation still really great and then you know obviously be able to get creative on uh long distances of, of third down and obvious passing situations. So I'm going to go Carl Loftus. I think if he's here at 22, it'd be hard for the Packers not to pick him. All right, Arizona, I'm going to go with Kenyon Green. I, I know they have made moves on the offensive line. I just doesn't, I don't think it looks like a good unit right now in the interior. We know how loud Kyler Murray has been overall. I, I think they know that they need to build the right infrastructure going forward. And they've done a good job on that offense overall, but it still needs to get a little better. Uh, you have Dallas picking right behind you. I think Dallas would be in the market for a player like Kenyon Green, so this really hurts them. So Arizona capitalizing on the first round of this offensive line class, not waiting around uh, for a unit that they it needs to get a lot better in that division. Wait, who'd you pick? I just missed it. I'm out, Kenyon I'm Green. Here, I'm out here doing research for the uh, for the Cowboys. I didn't even yeah, well, you don't have Kenyon Green on the board anymore, so good well, luck. Well, that doesn't help me. Thank you for making my life more difficult at 24. Uh, Cowboys. Could have Are you tra- going to dare do a Traylon Burks here? I, I mean, the answer is maybe. I'm going to 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 talk about I'm going to talk about my feelings over the next 60 seconds. Could go with a guy like Devin Lloyd. I know they still have Leighton Van Der Esch, but Travis Jalen, Jones, Jalen Smith gone. Um, you want to use Micah Parsons as more of like a chess piece than anything else. I think Devin Lloyd gives you a lot of flexibility to be able to do that. They'd love to go offensive line, but. You just took the last good, even interior offensive lineman that I would have taken at this point. I don't think they're going to be in on Tyler Linderbaum, so I don't think that's going to happen. Travis Jones could be interesting, but is Travis Jones enough flash for Jerry to take at 24? No, he's not. You know who is? Traylon Burks, baby. We're going yep. Traylon Burks at 24. I really do think that this is going to be tempting for uh, for the Cowboys in all seriousness. Uh, yeah. 
Oh, come on, man. Uh, Arkansas boy Arkansas, right there. Arkansas, Ar the Arkansas connection, it's right there. It's right there I, for the taking. I Brace yourself for that one. 25, the Bills. I love where this draft went for the Bills. It's Trent oh, McDuffie here. What? Slam dunk. so good. Slam dunk, Bills fans. Um, a great cornerback prospect in this draft. A scheme fit. He fits that culture they've built up there that I am all ball, win now, I can play now, I can contribute now. I love to come down in the alley and tackle. Trent McDuffie is the perfect fit in Buffalo. I love that. I really do. I, think I was that like is sitting a... here, fingers crossed, like fall McDuffie. Fall. That... <laughs> I Evil, think that but is necessary. That no, that is that is a really great pick for them. Okay, Tennessee Titans. Tennessee Titans is a landing spot where I think we could see Tyler Smith go because I That's, think he's their yeah. type. Would they pick him this high? I I think he's going in the first round, dude. I don't if think you, if you I, think so if round. you think so then this is definitely a landing spot so he's top of the clubhouse right now is there an edge rusher here that i'm not thinking about because i could also go edge you'd have to stash a jabo yeah ojabo at 26 mm. which you don't hate boy and mape could go in the first round easily I, no, no no i i don't disagree with you there would tennessee do that because Maybe. they've already got harold landry are they gonna have like lighter speed guys on both sides of the ball because don't they have Dupree too? They still have Dupree, right? Dupree, I think, has a year left. On I know, I, yeah, I know he's not there that long, and he's just not an effective pass rusher. Oh, Which is man. why I think it'll be on the board for them. But would they pick yep. up here? Oh, so Bud Bud has more money due than I a, thought. Yeah, it's a it's a it's, I real I real that solid, one. Back. It's a solid contract, my guy. Good good job, Bud's agent. <laughs> man. <laughs> I might be able to dance my way into three sacks for that guy. Cash. Just kidding. Good I job. die on the field. But um, <laughs> uh, all right, Ojabo or Tyler Smith. That's what it's coming down to here. All right. Hey, Man. look, if you think Tyler Smith's going first round, this is a spot to do it. So let's make he's it happen. Let's go he's Tyler. like, get him off the board before the Bucks pick. That's no, what he's dude, thinking. That's a th dude, that's I'm the just thing. Just kidding. It's a sleeper pick, though. I would love Tyler Smith at 27. I would well. I don't. I don't know if I want to use the word love. It would be a good pick for them to take Tyler Smith and kick him inside and let him shine. Put him next to Ryan guard. Jensen you're and right. Tristan Wirfs. Are you kidding me? Yeah, you're right. That'd be great. That is the move. Be a great pick. Be a that great is pick. the move. But now you can't make it because I just took him for the Titans. Yeah, no, yeah, you ruined it. The mock draft's over. We're done. All right, everybody. Hope you had a top twenty-six <laughs> pick. We will catch you <laughs> tomorrow <laughs> on the guest mock night. A lot of pressure uh, here with you at 27 because all of brutal, the good, good brutal picks for Tampa are off the board. Yeah, we we might have to draft and stash uh, Bailey Zappi in this situation. Let me sit behind Tom. Right. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it could happen. Um, man. I can't believe they picked Kyle Trask in the second round. It's pretty bonkers, isn't it? I can't it? believe it. You have Tom, you have Tom Brady. In it's the pretty greatest, bonkers. In the greatest winning window you're ever going to have in franchise history. And you picked a player who, best case scenario, does not see the field for the next three years. Yeah, they good, did it. Good, 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 good stuff. Great stuff. This is, uh, I mean, there. I I am a firm believer. Linderbaum's playing center at the next level. If he was a can throw him at guard for a year guy, it's Linderbaum. I it's not happening. Mm -hmm. Like it's not. I haven't talked to a team that's willing to do that right um i would try it but once again this is a what we think will happen mock so that takes the best player on the board off the board mm -hmm. we know about the bucks linebackers so it's not going to be lloyd or dean yeah yeah it won't be lloyd or dean i would love to draft and stash jabo um but i just once again i think this is a team that is truly on the you know we're in a window now and we want right. impact i think they want some impact now right Am I a total absolute lunatic if I go with Lewis Seen in this spot? You're 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 not a lunatic. You're you're definitely not a lunatic. Although I, I I've I've loved the pick. idea of Lewis Seen, but they've got Mike Edwards who they love. They have That's the thing. Where's he Jr., playing? Who they love. They just signed Logan Ryan and they just signed Slot. Keanu Neal. I forgot about the Neil signing. So that's I knew like, about the Logan Ryan so that's, one. That's what's tough. Not it's, doing it. It's, it's tough to get him playing time. It is. It is. I, I just know how to Todd will sit there with three safeties on the field until the cows come home. But like you said, they already have four. I, and I and didn't they already explicitly said Keanu Neal is going back to safety? 
I'm pretty sure. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so I'm not I'm not taking scene there. Dude, this is the this is the hardest pick in the mock draft. So there's <laughs> If they didn't sign Logan Ryan, it would be Daxon Hill just playing in the slot. Well, and I, I, I honestly, I don't think it's it's that crazy for you to want to just stash an athletic secondary player because that's what Tampa's done over the last three years. But Todd Jamil, does everywhere. Jamil, Jamil Dean and Sean Murphy Bunting are both free agents next year. Are they going to be able to bring both back? Probably not. So they're probably going to have a corner need next year anyways. Do you get ahead of it by drafting somebody like a Kyer Elam or a Jalen Petrie or a, or a Daxon Hill? You could do that. The other one that's kind of an obvious here is Travis Jones is still on the board. So if you Which want to Which I've pair, loved that pick for a if, long time. If you want to pair him with Vita Vey, you can. I've been told that they they probably are going to rather prefer a quick you were telling me they're looking for a gap shooter not a they are but like if they just believe that travis jones is a damn good football player i don't think they'll go too far away from it so there's a lot of options there with secondary or travis jones that i don't necessarily think there's a wrong answer for i'm gonna take daxton hill and i'll explain why okay after i just said no i like this i like he's not a safety he's a he can be a safety very easily He is a true matchup player in a league that everybody wants to put these big athletic tight ends in the slot. This is the guy that is going to go out there and try to cover the Kyle Pitts of the world, the Mike Gusecki's of the world, these kinds of players. But when you need him to do other things, whether it's play too high, you can move him all around the field, ball skills, athleticism. That's the kind of safeties that Todd Bowles loves. And... I just think that he's the easiest player to find a home for this year, and then his long-term home is so projectable with any of those guys they lose in the secondary to free agency. Dude, that was that would have been I I like the pick. I really do. And and you you explained it very well there. That would have been my pick for the Packers at 28. I would have taken Daxon Hill. (laughs) Sorry. They would have they would have just wanted athleticism there. I don't think they'd pick Tyrell Linderbaum. I don't think that they would. I don't think so either. They've already got George Karloftis. Mm. They draft really big offensive linemen, don't they? They do. They do. They do. They do. And then mm. Linderbaum. I know they took Josh Myers last year, too. Lewis Seen? Josh Myers is huge for a Get center. them that third safety and just a sh- crap ton of speed. I almost said the S word. Uh, crap ton of speed. The S word. I haven't heard that in a long time. I almost said shit. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Now we're going Sky Moore. We're making it happen. Whoa! We're going Sky okay. Moore. We're making it happen here. We're getting a wide fun. receiver. We're getting a damn good wide receiver. Good separator. Good That's underneath player. One. Guy who can give you a lot of yards after the catch. That's I'm a fun Sky one. I'm making Sky Moore happen. All right. So the Chiefs' uh, wide receiver potential got a little thinner now, and everybody's gonna just, you know, kill me if I don't take Christian Watson in this spot. I'm gonna put that no, burden no, no, on no, you. No, 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 don't. You're not. I'm not. You're, okay, I'm right, not doing right, it. All right, I'm not right, doing it. All right, because I'm, I'm gonna put that burden. Okay, all right, we're in a. You're pack. gonna pick Ojabo. You're gonna you're gonna cop out and pick Ojabo. I am gonna cop out and pick Ojabo. Actually, you. Mm, I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. Hold on, I'm not there yet. Okay. No, this pick is easier. This pick is easier <laughs> than I thought. Okay. What is it? I think. All right. I, uh, maybe not. Oh, now now it's not as easy as he once thought. They're good at safety. They're good at safety. They have Nick Bolton. Yeah, they have just they they got Reed. You you think they lost Tyron Matthew, but then you remember that they signed Justin Reed. Oh, the sneakiest signing of free agency. That was yeah. the best bargain signing of free agency. Oh, I agree. I agree. I agree. I am gonna go. There's good corners left. I am not gonna go David Ajabo here. Okay, but I am going pass rusher. Oh. I'm going with Boye Mafe in this spot. They they love have him. They, they have love tried. They love him. To it, they try to replace Frank Clark like every other hour, it feels like, and then they agree to a pay cut and they're like, All right, he's coming back. So, boy, am I, and you need more than one pass rusher. Boy, I'm off on that defensive line. Uh, I'm gonna go with as much as I'd love to pick George Pickens, I don't think I don't, I don't, I, I just don't, I don't think they're gonna pick George Pickens. Do you think he's going in the first round? No, that's why. Like, I, I, I don't, I don't think he's going in the first round. I think he should. But I, it's not a it's not a what we would do mock. Mm. So I'm going to take Kyrie Elam at 30 here for the Kansas City Chiefs. Nice. They need a corner to play the outside badly. man coverage. It's him or Andrew Booth. Andrew Booth's still on the board. Yes. So it's, it's it's one of those two dudes. And so um, yeah, I, I just want Kyrie Elam gives you the higher ceiling in man coverage. But I think either one could be great for him. All right, the Bengals here, and if you take linebacker, uh, you are not going to be 
No, they hate you. They're going to hate you. You're not going to be invited to the tailgate in in Trevor's home of Cincinnati. They're Um, not going to. They're going to hate you. So, and and I got to protect you. I can't have you walking around the streets of Cincinnati under fire for bad mock draft picks that I make. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Devin Lloyd and Kobe Dean still on the board is. It could happen. I've been I've been telling people it could very well happen. But I think I think Devin Lloyd's going way higher than this. I just don't know where. That is one. That is one of the players who I think Devin Lloyd is going in the top twenty. I don't know where. I agree. I, I would don't, be shocked. I, do, I, do, I don't know where he's going. I don't know where he's going in the top 20. Man, they're an interesting team. They really are. They could... I think... They're, like, good at pass rush. They're just not great. They're good there. I think one of the... Uh, let me look... Let me great pull at wide receiver. Depth set chart. at running back right now. So, I think that they've got Chidobi Wuzier. Uh, they have Eli Apple. They have Mike Hilton. So, it's a smaller corner group. So, like, if they wanted to go with an Booth. Andrew Booth, I think that makes a lot of sense for them. I think um, so, too. If they wanted to go, like, a Logan Hall along the defensive line, just, like, keep the defensive line really unique and 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 keep the pass rush up, I think that... And look at the quarterbacks sense. that they have, the gauntlet they have to get through to get back to the Super Bowl. Right, right. I think they, I think they need to upgrade corner. I really do. I think they've got to get more talent at corner. But I that's do pro- too. I'd probably be looking at either Logan Hall or Andrew Booth. That's where I'd be going if I were you. Yeah, I, I don't think Hall would, is going to go in the spot. I think, like you said, you raise it as a question. Um, I, I think it'll be Andrew. I'll go with Andrew Booth here. He's a, he's a player that was really literally hurt by being hurt through the process. I think people not getting to see him work out and, you know, former five star, really good athlete, good, you know, passes the size test, he has the length. So I, I think with Booth there, like you said, you're you're. This is more of a two year pick. You're thinking of your two year plan with cornerback with by taking Booth here. You're not going mm-hmm. for the, you know the the greatest pick that that's it, this infusion. Like it, you could even I guess make an argument for Lind- Linderbaum here, but they've done so much work on their offensive line through the pro market that I, I don't think they even really need a center in that spot. And it goes back to the we don't think he's going to play guard thing all over again. Right, right, right. Pick thirty two, Detroit. You're Lions. right, you're right. Hey, look, when you look, when you're right, you're right, and that's the uh, that's the only way that you can. That's I know what you're doing here. It's almost too easy. Who am I going with? You're taking Devin Lloyd. No, I'm not. Wow, I was taking Devin Lloyd up until 30 seconds ago, when I remembered that Desmond Ritter is still on the board, and they would probably Ugh. take it. They would probably take a chance on a quarterback in the first round to get the extra fifth year option on the contract over a linebacker, Connor. Oh Jesus, Desmond Ritter, there it is. There it is. Look at it. Look at that. Look at that, baby. Devin Lloyd didn't go in the first round because we had to get Desmond Ritter in there. <laughs> How does that make you feel, Connor? We gotta go live to Connor Rogers' apartment. It's like going to a steakhouse and saying, "No, put my steak back in the kitchen. I haven't had my salad yet." Mm. No, you don't need to do that. Just go to the steak. <laughs> you don't need to do it. Somebody, it's- wait. People would argue that it's the other way around. If you don't have quarterback figured out yet, you can't pick a linebacker. People would say it's the other way around. My take is Ritter is not figuring out quarterback. It's just right. saying, yeah, we tried. No, yeah, right. we gave it the old college try. Um, I mean, it makes for a fun, and I, I now I'm going to stop because I know we can't just keep doing this mock draft until the sun comes up. But it does make for a really fun, those picks like 33 through 40, because Devin Lloyd, N'Kobe Dean, Tyler Linderbaum, David Ajabo, Lewis Seen are yeah. all on the board. This goes back Christian Watson comment section raging right now, raging the Christian Watson's there. I mean, these teams and it's going to be a hot, hot trade market to get up to the top 40. I liked this mock draft. I thought this is a this was a great experiment to run. I'm really curious what you guys thought of these picks. first comment hated it well hated i mean like it. obviously of course look dude when no, this I'm when this kidding. when this show drops at midnight i'm going to post i'm going to be the first comment and i'm just going to say hated it like that's it i'll follow up or or just do the, the just a pff sucks from like a bot account with like eight numbers in their username which is always a classic but i did i enjoyed this mock draft because it was different we had the three edge rushers go one two three jacksonville detroit and then houston aiden hutchinson came on thibodeau and trayvon walker we have malik willis going six which I, we talked about why i think a quarterback is going six there jameson williams at 10 i think that shook things up a little bit vikings going jordan davis I mean, and then like you mentioned, man, top the, the the twenty to thirty-two, I thought were some really interesting spots that it got hard. Helped it got make really teams a lot hard. better. It does. It does. We're honing in on 
the players that we really like in this class and that we're confident are going to go high. And then there's a lot of, I would say there's probably 30 players that are in this toss up between late first, early second round. So it's just a lot of guys to choose from. That's where it gets so tricky is you have this. It's really easy, right? Like one through one through five was really easy. Hutch, Thibodeau. We know Walker's going in there. Aquanu and Neal. Then you have the variable quarterback, but then you still have the sauce, Kyle Hamilton, Stingley, a couple top flight wide receivers with Jordan Davis and Jermaine mm-hmm. Johnson. Like that, mm-hmm. that's really easy. You're just finding places. You're throwing where those guys are going. Then it just goes into like a vast, vast group of players that in terms of grades are going to be pretty close throughout. Right. And that's where it got very us diving into I think this team needs this. I think this team likes this. I think this team doesn't draft offensive linemen that play under 300 pounds. I think this team doesn't draft want a wide receiver that's small. You start to go into all the team thresholds, and that's what makes the mock draft exercise, no matter how. I mean, you and I have done this so many Sunday nights at this point, mm. and yet we are still getting different results. Yep. We yep. are, what, two and a half weeks away from the actual right. draft. No, no, it's it's good. It's it's getting to crunch time, and and we're obviously having a good time doing these simulations, trying to figure out what works and what doesn't. I like the fact that we didn't do trades in this one because even though we know trades are going to happen, uh, statistics show that just over five day one trades happen. So there's a good chance that we're getting anywhere from four to six trades in the first round. the The numbers are most of the time it doesn't happen. So I think that it was great to show what teams might be thinking if they happen to be picking here, if they happen to not be moving up or down. And so we we could find candidates where it's like, okay, this team's probably going to move up. This team's probably going to move back. But what if it doesn't? Deals throw up, fall through all the time for a lot of different reasons. So I I also enjoyed that part of it. We've done a lot of mocks with trades. And so I, I liked taking trades out of this one updating the team needs and the prospect profiles a little bit with what we've been hearing over the last couple of weeks since we've done a mock draft with no trades and seeing how it fell because this was a different mock draft than anything we've ever done. Yeah, it was. I think, it, you know what, my takeaways right now that we're looking at it from, you know, the wide lens, stepping back afar, it's fascinating how hard it is to find Tyler Linderbaum a home, a player that is a top 10 player for me, uh, a great player. And no matter how many times you run through the exercise, you look at it and you go, especially with Miami out of the first round now, that made that a lot more difficult. Of course, yeah. Because Miami you, would kill for any good offensive lineman at this point, and they just don't pick in the, the, the first round. Great scheme fit, everything. It's just, that's my big takeaway that I look at it and go, man, he really could be there at 33 for Jacksonville. Cool. <laughs> Yeah, no, he could. Hot sauce. He, he could be. He could be one of many really great players that are still going to be sitting there at the beginning of day two. It's always one of the funnest parts of the draft. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed that. Uh, let us know in the comment section. All jokes aside, let us know if you loved it, hated it, what picks that you thought should have gone where. If you like certain team combinations that Connor and I were able to give there tomorrow, we are continuing the guest mock draft series and we are rounding out the top twenty with four fantastic guests. We're then going to be into oh man, into the twenties, almost into the thirties, and you guys know what that means that means that draft weekend is almost here thanks so much for listening to the nfl stock exchange we'll see you guys tomorrow